Mini Moog number 4245. In this synthesizer's life, it has been modified. It actually has the oscillator upgrade in it, and there's been some modifications done to it. We have been told these modifications were done by none other than Rich Walborn, one time, uh, well, long time chief engineer at Moog Music in the 70s and 80s. And you can see, well, I don't know how familiar you are with the mini mode, but you can see there are some extra knobs here. There's some changes. There's a bunch of switches. And um, I'm going to explore these changes and the sound of the synthesizer so that you know what you're getting into. Because you, as a discerning raffle ticket buyer, want to know what your $20 is going towards. First, I'm going to start off with just an exploration of the sound and functionality of this particular mini mode. Let's start off with oscillator one, which is set to eight feet and a sawtooth wave. Great mini moog sawtooth. Here is the sawtooth triangular wave, my personal favorite. Uh, we have a triangle wave. Awesome triangle wave. Square wave. Quite loud. Uh, a I've always struggled with what to call this wave. It is a pulse wave, but it's not a full square wave pulse wave. It's between a pulse wave and a square wave sort of pulse wave. And of course, the, what we traditionally call the pulse. And we have, of course, a large range. We have everywhere from low, which is the clicks, to 32 foot. Listen to this triangle wave in that octave. Wow. Um, so we also have, of course, 16 foot, 8 foot, 4 foot, and 2 foot. So a very wide range for all three oscillators. We have these exact same waveforms for all three oscillators. Here's what oscillator two sounds like. Pretty much the same. Those are all the different waveforms, but of course oscillator two has the ability for you to fine tune the note. So if you're playing oscillator one and oscillator two at the same time, you can uh, create a, a different interval between the two oscillators. Or you can just have basic detuning. I'm sorry, I just have to stop and say, oh my gosh, I love the Mini Moog. The Mini Moog is so, okay, I'm sorry. So yes, this Mini Moog is awesome. And Oscillator 3, of course, has all the same waveforms. Triangle, uh, Sawtooth Wave, well, not all of the same waveforms. Oscillator 3 on a Mini Moog has actually a different set of waveforms for modulation purposes, but here's a triangle. Here's a Sawtooth Wave. Here's the Ramp Wave. And if you're saying to yourself, why do those sound exactly alike? It's because when you turn a sawtooth backwards, it still sounds like a sawtooth. But when you slow down the oscillator to become a modulation source, like you can with oscillator three on the mini Moog, uh, the sawtooth wave and the ramp wave have very different sound modulation sounds. So that's why they're both here, even though from an audio standpoint, they sound very similar. Uh, square wave, kind of square wave. And Pulse wave. So you have three oscillators with uh, those combinations of waveforms.
Yeah, the oscillator section, as I've just demonstrated, fully functional. You have the ability, of course, to turn the keyboard control of oscillator 3 off so that it can be a steady source of modulation no matter what key you press on the keyboard. It's a great way to fool someone who doesn't know how to play a mini Moog into thinking it's broken. <laughs> wow, well, this only plays one note. Okay, that's not funny. Anyway, so the oscillator section sounds great. It's fully functional. Uh, we have the mixer section, of course, which allows you to set the volumes and the activity of each oscillator. You can turn them all off, but have them set at a preset volume for your own convenience. You also can control the noise. Let's have a listen to the noise. The volume of the noise and whether it is white or pink. You also have the external input volume, so whatever outside instrument you plug into the Minimoog, you can control its volume here, and whether it's playing along with you while you're playing the rest of the synthesizer with the switch, of course. So, let's head on over to the filter. Let's have a listen. There's no emphasis. Emphasis is the same as resonance. the great, warm, delicious Moog 24 decibel per octave filter. In its mini Moog form, one of the best forms. Somehow, like in its process of removing those higher frequencies, it adds such a warmth and a sweetness. Of course, we also have resonance. We And the filter self oscillates. As a your absolute the, the one of the most desirable filters in synthesizer history. And if you want that filter to change over time, of course we have the contour or what is these days more commonly called the filter envelope. These are the sounds that make this synthesizer so popular. And of course you have keyboard effect, which alters the filter cutoff point depending on what note you play on the keyboard. The notes all represent voltages, what key, the keys all represent voltages, and those voltages control the filter cutoff point, allowing you to have instruments that get brighter as they go higher, like acoustic instruments. But in this instance, if we have both of these on, we can also use the self-oscillation of the filter as a tone source. We have to turn off the contour though. See, uh, the filter is providing that high note we're hearing. Listen, I'll shut off the oscillators. That's a sine wave. The filter is self-resonating because the resonance has pushed a specific harmonic loud enough that it becomes audible to us, which is a really cool sound, but people usually don't use the filter for that, but they could. 
Um, so yes, that is the filter section. <laughs>